wait upon the Lord. Hallelujah. Can we just stand for a minute? Lift up your hands and sing that song with me. They that wait upon the Lord. Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in this place already tonight. Not just in this place, but in the heart of all the hearers. God, we know, Jesus, you're not just here, but you're going out from here, God. We believe that with all our hearts. We've asked it. God, we've asked it. Hallelujah, Lord. We believe it tonight and we receive it. That you're blessing and touching many hearts. Lord Jesus, we just ask you bless this work tonight. God, this table that you've spread before. For us, help us to eat and to be blessed from it in Jesus' precious name. You may be seated. Hallelujah. I want to talk to you tonight about strength for the journey. The Lord's been dealing with me for a while now on this message. And maybe part of it's because as we travel, we see so many people that are going through so many things. I don't know if it's more so now than it used to be. Probably it's always been this way. We just notice it more now because we travel more. But many people are suffering. There's many losing loved ones. Everywhere we turn, someone is losing someone. And my husband and I have had many losses recently in our family and brother jb just so many things and i see so many people struggling but god spoke to my heart he's been speaking it to my heart i will give you strength for the journey i will give you strength church i want you to grab a hold of that tonight when the devil pushes you down and he tries to stomp on you and he tries to hold you down you just let him know god told me that he's given me strength for the journey you'll not keep me down you might have me down for a while but i'm going to rise back up because i'm going to wait on the lord and if i wait on him he'll renew my strength Amen. hallelujah we're going to talk about strength for the journey you can turn to joshua with me if you will this is the one that god laid on my heart joshua chapter one yeah come on. hallelujah we're going to start verse one now after the death of moses the servant of the lord it came to pass that the lord spake unto joshua the son of nun moses's minister saying i want you to notice in this scripture that at the beginning moses the servant of the Lord. He was a faithful servant to God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Then it talked about Joshua, the faithful servant to Moses. Who has God put you to be a servant to tonight? Every one of us are servants to yeah. somebody. Oh. And it's so important. I want you to realize how important it is that you be faithful. Faithful. Yeah. You know, when Moses spent, sent the 12 spies out, there was two that came back with a good report. Yeah. Who were they? Joshua and Caleb. Yeah. Joshua was a faithful Come servant on. to Moses. And he came back with a good report. Yeah. And he came back with a report yeah. of faith. And he says, no. The others, they looked at themselves as grasshoppers. They seemed to be so small compared yeah. to the giants they seen yeah. in the land. But Joshua said, we are more than able. Hallelujah. We are more than able tonight, church. God's going to give you strength. He says in ourselves, no, we can't do this because we look like grasshoppers. We're small. 
Joshua, and he said, Moses, my servant is dead. Now you remember, Moses never came down from that mountain. No. God just, we don't know what God did with him, but he didn't come back down. But God spoke to Joshua, yeah. and he let him know, oh. Moses is dead. Yeah. And guess what, Joshua? Yeah. Guess who's going to have to fill his shoes? Yeah. Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all this people, and to the land which I yes. do give Woo. to them, yes, Lord. Yes. even to the children of Israel. Yeah. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Moses, my servant is dead. Come this on. is clear to Joshua that Moses, God's servant, was dead. And I'm telling you tonight that those were some big shoes that Joshua was going to have to step yeah. into. And he's seen some of the things Moses went through. He's seen and he knew the trials and he knew the, how the children of Israel could be. He knew how stubborn they could be. And he was like, God... But the Lord says, Joshua, Moses is dead, and I choose you. Yeah, I yeah. choose you to lead yeah. my people across right. this Come Jordan on. to the promised land. Yeah. Now, I want you to remember that God had, had given Moses a promise for the children of Israel that he was going to give them a land flowing with milk and honey. Yeah. And he was going to receive a promised land. But now Moses is dead. But I ask you, did that promise? cease to exist. No, Did no. God say, oh well, I'll just stop right here. No, Moses is right. dead and oh, we'll yeah. just go on and have a good time and forget about them people. But no, no the promise was still no. real. No. It was yeah. still alive. And so now he's got a man named Joshua and he yeah. says, you're going to step into the place of my servant Moses yeah. and you're going to lead these people somewhere yeah. where I have promised them. Yeah. And no, Joshua must have thought my God, how can I? Lord, I don't know about this journey. Every one of you tonight has a journey. You have a journey. Yours is different than mine. You have a journey. You have a journey. Every one of you in here tonight, even these little babies have a journey. And I don't know what your journey is. I know my husband and I have been married for 35 years. And believe me, it's been a journey. Hallelujah. But you know, as great as our marriage is, and as much as we both love the Lord, I still got my journey yeah. that I've got to make sure I stay in line with God. Yeah. It's yeah. me. I'm going to answer to Him. Yeah. Your neighbor's not going to answer. Your wife's not going to answer no, for you. You will answer for your yeah. journey. And He says, Joshua, come on, this journey can't stop. You've got to continue this journey. Yeah. My people have been given a promise, and I want you to step in his shoes yeah. and I want you to lead my people. Leo, yes. come on. But God, how can this be? How can this be? I want you to go down to verse 5 with me. Come on now. And listen to what God told him. He said, There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so will I be with thee. Hallelujah. Church, can you get a hold of that? God's trying to tell you tonight. He's yeah. trying to tell you tonight, as I was with Moses, church, I'm going to be with you. I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. He told me one time, he said it might look like man is in control, but man is not in control. I am in control. God let me know that several years ago. I'm hung on to that still today. We've got an election coming up, and we don't even know which way things are going to go. Probably not too good for, for the world, but I can tell you one thing. Children, this is a different journey we're beginning to run into, and we've got to have strength for it. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yeah. And you'll not receive strength in yourself. No. If you're trying to do it in yourself, you will fail. Yeah. If you're trying to do it without prayer, you'll fail. Yeah. If you're trying to do it, as my husband said, without the word of God, without yeah. the Lord, you'll fail. Amen. Yeah. Do you understand? You'll fail without God. Yeah. Amen. Yes. And just saying a little prayer of repentance and going on your merry way and oh, never stop to talk to Him, That's to right. hear from Him, yes. now you will not make it. Yes. 
That's right. right. Amen. That's right. Come on. That's right. You need to be filled with the Holy Ghost Amen. with the evidence of speaking in yeah. tongues. You need that power. Yeah. The apostles had to have it. Yeah. You've got to have it. Got to have it. Got to have it. This is the strength that will take you on your journey. Yeah. Oh my, it's not a secret. It's not a new thing. But I'll tell you today, the church needs to be reminded. You need the gift of the Holy Ghost. Bless her, Lord. As I was with Moses, I'll be Bless with her, you. Lord. Yeah. I will not <laughs> fail thee. <laughs> Church, God will not fail thee. Yeah. God will not fail us. No. He will not fail us. He'll not leave us here alone to fight this battle. Yes, we're in a battle. Yeah. And I thank God. Come on. That I get to fight yeah. in this battle. Brother Crow hit the nail on the head. <laughs> it's not flesh and blood. That's right. If you're fighting flesh and blood, you need to repent. That's right. yes. Come on. It's not flesh and blood. Hallelujah. That's not your enemy. No. no. The devil's your enemy and he hates you. And he wants to destroy you. But God said, yes. I'll not fail thee nor no. forsake thee. No. Have not I commanded thee, be strong and of good courage. Yes. Be not afraid. Yes. Neither be dismayed, for the Lord thy Come God on. is with thee whithersoever thou goest. Yeah. Yes. Strength for the journey. Strength for the journey. I want to point out something about Moses. Yes, Lord. Moses was 120 years old when yeah. he died. Uh-huh. Right. His eyes were not dim. No. Uh-huh. The scripture says. Nor his natural force abated. Uh-huh. No. I wonder if he still looked 29. <laughs> <laughs> Moses had it going on. Yeah. <laughs> Think about all the money we spend trying to look young. Come on! <laughs> and I'll tell you what, I'm 56 and it gets harder and harder and harder to read those words yeah. without my glasses. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but as I was with Moses, yeah. I will be with you. Yeah. Amen. Thank Come on. Good word. Praise the Lord. We bring so many things on ourselves. Yes. Yeah. I do. I'll say me. I told my husband today. I said, I probably won't live to be 76 years old. If I don't live to be 76 years old, it will be my own fault, most likely, because I don't take care of myself. Come on. I know this to be a fact. Hopefully, somewhere along the line, I'll start to do better in that area. But I'm just saying that be to say this. We bring a lot of things on ourselves. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Now, I'll tell you what. Moses had to stay in tune with God because he had some people that oh, was yeah. on him. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> he had some people that was on <laughs> And he had a long journey. Yes. <laughs> and he had to be able Bless to hear Lord. from God. Bless yeah. the Lord. But in that long journey, and in the midst of those yes. rebellious people, Come on. God was faithful yes. to Moses. Hallelujah. And Moses was a faithful servant to God. Yes. Right. Wherever God's put you, be faithful. Amen. Be faithful. All right. I'm going to read a scripture in Psalms 119, 28. My soul melted for heaviness. Strengthen thou me according to thy words. My soul melted with heaviness. Strengthen thou me according to thy words. And I thought about sometimes how that we get so troubled with things that we just feel like 
we can't hardly lift ourselves up. God, uh, David cries out to God and he said, My soul melted with heaviness. God, I need you to strengthen me, God. And then, if you go to Psalms 138.3, he says, In the day when I cried, Thou answered me. Yeah. Yes. Hallelujah, yeah. Lord. My soul is yeah. so vexed and it's melted within yeah. me with heaviness, God. This heaviness is on me and I have no strength. Strengthen me, God. Help me, Lord. And he yeah. says, the moment I cried out, God heard me. Yeah. <laughs> the I day when I cried, Thou answered me and strengthenest me with strength in my soul. They that wait upon the Lord, He yeah, will renew yeah, our strength. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I'd like to say this to you. Don't, feel, don't let the devil bring condemnation on you when you're feeling heavy. Come on. When you're feeling burdened. Yeah. When you're feeling like your strength has been taken from you. Don't let the devil throw a bunch of condemnation on you yeah. and say, well, if you was just where you needed to be with God, well, David was a man after God's own heart. And still, he found himself having to say, God, I need your strength. I don't have any more left. God, I need you. It's so important that we realize how we need God. Yes. I want to go. I want to hurry through this. I'm going to just read one. And Philippians 4:13 says, "I can do all things through Christ." I use that scripture a lot. Yeah, a whole lot. About every day, I use that scripture. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. I can do all things which through Christ. The devil says, "No, you know you can't." Well, he's right, as my husband says, I can't. And you can't. But through Christ, we all yeah, can. Hallelujah. <laughs> Who strengthens us. Strength for the journey. Church, I want to encourage you tonight. Whatever journey you're on for God, He's going to give you strength to do it. And remember, if He brings you to it, He's going to bring you through it. Yeah. Now, remember the Hebrew children, they had to go through the fire, did they not? Yeah. Daniel had to go into the den of lions, right. did he not? Just remember that Job, all the trials that came on him, yeah. but still God brought them through, through it. it. Yeah. You may have to go in a den of lions. You may have to go through a fire. Amen. But God will bring you through it if He brings you to it. Yeah. Now, I want to talk I want to read in Luke, and this will be my last passage. And I want to talk to the sinners. And I pray and hope that there's some listening to me tonight. Yeah, I I want to talk to the sinner for a minute. I want, to, I want them to realize that their strength to come to Jesus will have to come from God. Yeah. Jesus has to call them or they cannot come. That's right. Now I want to read in Luke 5, starting verse 18. Behold, men brought a bed, in a bed a man which was taken with the palsy. And they sought means to bring him in and to lay him before him. And when they could not find by what way they might bring him in because of the multitude, they went up on the housetop and led him down through the tiling with his couch into the midst of Jesus. Yeah. This man was a desperate man and he needed to get to Jesus. Yeah. If you're living in sin tonight, if you don't know Jesus, if you've been living a life that's got you in turmoil and strife, and every day seems like such a dreadful thing to you, if you don't know Jesus, He wants you to come to Him tonight. It doesn't matter where you're at. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what you've done. And if you don't seem to be able to get to Jesus, there are lots of people in this tent tonight that will help you come 
to him will help you get to him. This man in the scripture we just read, his sickness had him so bad, but he had some friends that knew if they could get him to Jesus, Jesus could touch him. Jesus could heal him. And they couldn't get through because of the crowd. So they climbed up on the top of the, right, of the building and they began to tear the roof off. Yeah. Why? Because this man needed Jesus. Jesus. Yeah. He was so, so much in need. And he had to get, they had to get him there. Yeah. we got to get our friend to Jesus. Yeah. I wonder tonight, Hallelujah. do you have such a friend? Hallelujah, that will help you get to Jesus. Yeah. We have friends that will take us out and, and give us parties to drink and, and do yeah, things that we yeah. know we should not do that will get us into all kinds of trouble and bring us all kinds of heartache and sickness. But we do we have a friend tonight that will get us to Jesus. If you don't have a friend that will get you to Jesus, I'm begging you to come and let us love you and bring you to Jesus. When the Lord saw their faith, He said to him, and I love this scripture, Man, thy sins are forgiven thee. Yes, yeah. they are. When Jesus looked at that man, now that man was there because he was sick with the palsy and he needed healing. But what did Jesus see when he looked at that man? You might be sick with cancer tonight. You might be sick with all kinds of disease. But when Jesus looked at that man, he seen a man living in sin that was on his way to hell. And he seen a man that needed something that better than he needed something that on the inside that he needed. A, there was something on the inside he needed that the outside healing wasn't going to bring to him. Hallelujah. If you die and you're lame and you go to heaven, blessed are you. But if you die and your body is whole and you go to hell, it'll be the worst thing could ever happen. Yeah. And yeah. as Jesus looked at that man and he seen that it, in the inside of him, yeah. that he needed something more than healing. Yes, he did. He says yeah. to him, the he greatest words that we could ever hear, yeah. he thy sins be, born again. No, be forgiven. <laughs> Yes, And then the men that he was with, or the people around, was like, who does he think he is? Yes, come, come on, on now. I'll tell you who he was. Yes. He was Jesus the Christ, yes. the Son of the living God. Yes. 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 Took away the sins of the world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. He's the man. Yes, and hung on the cross. Yes. And give every drop of blood he had. Thank you, Jesus. Because it took it all. Yeah. When God told Joshua to step in them shoes, it wasn't gonna be no easy task. Oh, right. When they took the, when they when they went yeah. across the the one Jordan, the first thing they had to do was get across Jordan when they got across there because God did a miracle. Then it was the walls of Jericho. Yeah. Every step of the way, it was yeah. a fight. Yes. Yeah. Amen. I tell Bless you tonight, Lord. every Bless step of the Lord. way, Hallelujah. it's a fight. Yes, but if you'll fight it with the Word of God, if yeah. you'll let Jesus Christ come yeah. into your heart, yeah. forgive you of your yeah. sins, if you'll truly repent, and repent means to turn yeah. away from your evilness, from yeah. your sin, if you'll truly repent, yeah, Lord. and ask Jesus to forgive you, my, the Scripture my, says my. He is faithful and just to yes, forgive you. Yes, Lord. And then the scripture says, if we will just be baptized in his precious name, yeah. take on that precious, precious name. Yeah. My be married to Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. I've only got to baptize one person. That was my daughter in law. And Sister Cherie, it was the most blessed feeling when I put her down in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory. Never felt anything like it before. Maybe someday I'll get to it again. Thank you. But I let my husband take care of that because sometimes I don't want to lose them in the water. 
<laughs> then the scripture says we will be filled with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Could you stand with me? I pray tonight that you will realize one thing about this freedom tent. It doesn't matter what time of the day it is. These altars are open. Yeah, that's right. If the tent walls are down and you need to use these altars, you come and get a hold of us. Yeah. We'll make sure you get the, to use these altars. Yeah. Let's not leave the altars empty tonight. No. But I ask you tonight to come and to pray and seek the face of God. Lord, we thank you for your amazing grace. God, we thank you for your amazing grace. Hallelujah. I'd like to ask those that need to come and give your heart to God. The sinner, would you come? The sinner, would you come? Jesus is bidding you to come. And he's asking you to do